Recording in progress. Okay. All right. Uh, this week is uh, is Yom Kippurim. So uh, I will focus on the mitzvah of tshuva and uh, discuss the relationship between the general mitzvah of tshuva and the mitzvah, the, uh, the, gen, uh, the mitzvah, the mitzvah of tshuva uh, on Yom Kippur. Now the Rambam, at the beginning of Hilchos Tshuva, I once heard from my uncle in a, in a speech, my uncle said that it's very interesting that in Hilchos Tshuva, there are 10 prakim. And he said there was the custom of Reb Chaim and my grandfather that each day of a Sarah Shimei Tshuva, of the seven days of Tshuva, uh, to learn one parak of the Rambam of Hilchos Tshuva. He says he doesn't know whether the Rambam intentionally formed Hilchos Tshuva with, uh, with ten prakim for that reason, or it's just a coincidence, but nevertheless, it was a good idea to, uh, to, to in terms of learning during the uh, 10, the Aserah Shuva, during the 10 days of Shuva. Now the Rambam at the beginning of Hilchas Shuva, he has what's called the Koseris, the introduction to every set of chapters to, in, to discuss, he lists the mitzvos that are involved in in the, in the in the chapters the chapters that he's going to discuss, so the Rambam says, There is one mitzvah, mitzvah seyachas. There's one mitzvah involved in shiva, and that is that the chote the sinner. The sinner should return. Now, uh, I see that the English translation uh, translated Yashuv to repent. That's not a correct translation. The correct translation is to return. He should return from his sin before God. And that he should say vidu, he should say the confessional prayer. And this is not talking particularly about Yom Kippur. This is talking in general. When somebody recognizes that he sinned, so the person has to has to do tshuva. Now it's interesting. The Rambam counts it as one mitzvah. The Ramban in Chumash. And what is that mitzvah? It, it, the, in the beginning of, of Chumash Bamidbar, Parakei, so when it talks about giving korbanos uh, because of avarice that a person did, because of sins that a person committed, giving a sacrifice as a form of repentance, the Torah employs the Lashon Vadu. And they shall say the confessional prayer. So this is the source, according to the Rambam, of the mitzvah. The Ramban says, no, there are two distinct mitzvahs. One mitzvah is a mitzvah of tshuva. What's the mitzvah of tshuva? The mitzvah of tshuva is that when one recognizes that he sinned, of course, to stop sinning, that goes without saying. And the person, uh, if, uh, you have to stop sinning in any case because every time you commit a sin, it's another Avera. But be, be, uh, because of the mitzvah of tshuva, you also have to stop sinning. And your person has to have feelings of regret or shame. And he has to have a determination that he won't return to that sin. That's the mitzvah of tshuva. 
the mitzvah of vidui is to oralize those feelings. So the Ramban, my, the Nachmanides, he counts it as two separate mitzvahs. One mitzvah is the mitzvah of tshuva. The other is a mitzvah of vidui, of reciting the confessional prayer. It goes without saying that if somebody doesn't do tshuva, he can't recite the confessional prayer. Now, however, when we deal with the Rambam, there seems to be a contradiction from one line to the other in the, in the Koseris, in the introduction, the Rambam says there is one mitzvah. And what's the mitzvah? For who she yashuv hachalte mechatol fneshem biyispada. That the sinner should return from his sin before God biyispada and say the bidui and say the confessional prayer. So from the Rambam here, it seems that the mitzvah is not just saying the confessional prayer, but part of the mitzvah is sheyoshuv hachote mechatol lefnei Hashem. He should return from his sin to God. The sinner is separated from God. And in order to return to God, he must have these, these feelings of tshuva, whether it's feelings of determination, never to commit these sins again, or it's feelings of and, or feelings of regret and shame for the deeds that he did. But nevertheless, a person is required to, to to make sure to do tshuva. Uh, Rabbi Wernick, who was uh, my mashkiach, he once came over to me and he said to me, he says, how does one do tshuva for not doing tshuva? In other words, he assumed that besides the avera that one committed, one is required to repent, repent, if you want to use that word, or to return from that. So if one doesn't do tshuva, even if he doesn't commit that sin again, he's not in violation of one act, but he's continuously in violation of the mitzvah doing tshuva. He's required to do tshuva. And that's what it appears from the Koseris. From the Koseris of the Rambam, from the introduction of the Rambam, it seems that one is required to do tshuva. However, the Rambam, in the next sentence, in the first halacha, in the first law of the laws of tshuva, he says, kol mitzvah sheva Torah, all the mitzvahs of the Torah, ben ase ben lo sase, whether it's a positive commandment or a negative commandment. If, of our Adam mehem, if a person violated even one of them, bein besodom, bein bishkaga, whether he did it willingly or inadvertently, tshuva, when he does tshuva, the yoshev mechato, and returns from his sin, He's required to say the confessional prayer before God. When a, a, a man or a woman, when they do when they do a violate a certain uh, law, so they should they should say vidui. But the expression of the Rambam is kisheya said tshuva. When he does do tshuva, the Rambam doesn't say chayav lasos tshuva, that he is required to do tshuva. He just says that when he does tshuva, he's required to say the confessional prayer. So according to this expression of the Rambam, it would seem that if a person sinned, of course, the sin remains with him. 
and he will be held responsible for that sin unless he does tshuva. But the fact that he didn't do tshuva in itself is not a violation of any law. But if he does do tshuva, if he does, if he does have feelings of regret, if he has feelings of a commitment, so then he is required to say the bidui prayer, the confessional prayer. So there seems to be a contradiction. Is one required to do tshuva or one is not required to do tshuva? Now, the, the Minchas Chinuch, and that's very, very strange, the Minchas Chinuch and the Meshechachma, the Rebmeir Simcha, they both said that according to the Rambam, one is not required to do tshuva. A person, but when he does do tshuva in his heart, then he's required to oralize the tshuva. I don't know what they'll do with the Koseris though, because the Koseris says, uh, I remember many years ago, uh, we're sitting at the table and my father and Reb Rifkin, Reb Moshe Duber Rifkin, who was a Rosh Hashiv in Tor Vedas for many years, but also Lubavitch of Chassid. So he was mentioning to my father that he used to put out Kuntresen pamphlets. And in one of his pamphlets, he assumed like the Meshachachma and like the Minchas Chinuch, that there is no requirement to do Chukla. And being a... Uh, and being a a uh, a, 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 chas, a a Lubavitcher Chassid, a loyal Lubavitcher Chassid, uh, of course he was one of the outstanding Talmidei Chachamim, uh, and uh, not just of Lubavitch, but in general, he was one of the outstanding Torah scholars of the generation. But nevertheless, he was, he was a Lubavitch Chassid, and whenever he put out a Kuntras, he would bring a copy of this pamphlet. He would to write to the Torah in pamphlets. He would bring a pamphlet to, to he would bring a pamphlet to the to Lubavitch Rebbe. And he mentioned that the Lubavitch Rebbe told them he wasn't happy with this point. In other words, because Lubavitch Rebbe felt, and that's true to the sheet of Lubavitch, that the mitzvah of tshuva, that there is a mitzvah of tshuva, that a person is required to do tshuva. And, but I remember years later, I read either a sicha or a mimer of the Lubavitch Rebbe, probably a sicha, and the Lubavitch Rebbe, he mentions, he mentions the argument, and he says, even though he is of the opinion that, that uh, tshuva is definitely a mitzvah, but nevertheless, any shita, any, true, any shita that is said in Torah has to be explained al pi chasidus in accordance with Hasidus. So then he not only explains his own opinion from a Hasidic perspective, that the mitzvah of tshuva, that tshuva is a mitzvah, but he even explained the Minchas Chinuch's opinion, whom he says he doesn't agree with, also in, in accordance with Hasidus. Okay, whatever. So, so there is an argument as to so the, what the Rambam's opinion is, but if the Rambam's opinion, and, and Reb Chaim, my great grandfather, was of the opinion that tshuva is a mitzvah, tshuva is a mitzvah, and and but according to Reb Chaim, it's all part of the mitzvah of his vatu. 
The mitzvah bizvadu is to do tshuva and say vidu. So we have to understand, we have to understand the Rambam. Now, especially in view of the fact, the, if you take a look at Perik Bey's Allah Chazayin of Hilchos Tshuva, the Rambam there is very clear Yom HaKippurim Huzman Shuvah Lakol. Yom Kippur is a day, a time of Shuvah for everybody. L'yochel L'Rabbim V'hu Ketz Mechila L'Slichel Yisrael. It is the conclusion of forgiveness and pardon for, for the Jewish people. Lefichach, therefore, chayobim hakol lasos tshuva ulehispatos biyom atipurim. Therefore, everybody is required to do tshuva and say vidu and yom atipurim. Now, Rabbi Yona, he was of the opinion that the mitzvah of tshuva, that there's a separate mitzvah of tshuva and yom atipurim. Uh, the mitzvah. It, it, it is Hashem Titaru before God, the Kohen Gadol, after he did the Avoda, would turn to the Jewish people and say, Before God, you shall purify yourselves. This was on Yom Kippurim. So there is a special mitzvah, Rabbi Niona says, of doing Chuv on Yom Kippurim. Well, we have to understand that opinion also. But if according to the Rambam, there is no mitzvah of tshuva, as the Minchas Chinuch and the Meshach Chachma suggest. So how could the Rambam says that you say that everybody is required to do tshuva and say vidu and Yom Kippurim? Obviously, there has to be a biblical mitzvah of tshuva, which applies every day of the year, but has special significance, and we have to understand why it's special on Yom Kippurim as well. So the opinion of the Minchas Chinuch, even if you want to change the Girsa, which is very easy to do, the text of the Koseris, so is very difficult because if there's no mitzvah tshuva, how could the Rambam say that one is required to do tshuva in Yom Kippurim? And the Rambam himself in Hilchus Tshuva in numerous places emphasizes the requirement of doing Tshuva. He says that the old, all the prophets commanded about the mitzvah of Tshuva. I mean, I've heard people suggest that the, the Rambam is only saying it was a mitzvah, but that doesn't make sense. In other words, the prophets commanded the Jewish people to fulfill the mitzvah of the Torah. So how is it possible to suggest that the Rambam held that there was no mitzvah of tshuva? Now, just as a side point, I just want to bring out, when you take a look, the Rambam says that a person who realizes during the year that he sinned, so when he does tshuva and returns from his sin, so he's, he's required to say the vidu prayer. And what is in the vidu prayer that he says? An Hashem, please God. What, please God, please God. What two things we can say? Please forgive me. Please give me a kapara. Please give me atonement. Please, God, give me strength to maintain this tshuva. On Hashem, please, God. Chatasi avisi pashati. What does chatasi mean? Chatasi means I sinned inadvertently. Avisi is I sinned knowingly. Pashati is I rebelled. Lufanecha before you. 
Why does it, why do you have to say Lefanecha? Because how does a Jew come to sin? He uses what I call the ostrich approach. He makes believe that God isn't there. If God is there, if I sense God's presence, as I express time and time again in the Shiurim, it's very difficult to sin. So when a person does tshuva, he has to realize what was his mistake. His mistake was that he imagined that God wasn't there. So Anashem, please God. I sinned inadvertently. I did this sin. And I regret it and I'm ashamed that I will never do it again. Now, I sinned inadvertently. I sinned knowing. I rebelled. So the question is, why do we have to mention all three? I sinned inadvertently. I sinned. I sinned uh, knowing and I sinned rebelling. Whichever it was, if he sinned inadvertently, you should say, I sinned inadvertently. If he says, I sinned knowingly, so he should say, knowingly, if he was rebelling. I remember years ago, there was a certain person who, who for whatever reason, he did shiva, he became a real bal shiva, very firm person, but he mentioned, came to my father, I was there. And he said that he was angry at HaKadosh Baruch. And he wanted to demonstrate his rebelliousness against HaKadosh Baruch. So he said he tried to eat not kosher food. He just couldn't do it. He couldn't eat not kosher food. So what did he do? So he used to take an object and go into the Rosh Hashanah, into the public domain, and pick it up, make hagba, and walk down Ramos, for Ramos, and then put it down. And he would repeat that over and over, just to, to demonstrate his rebelliousness. So, but sometimes a person is overcome by his desires. He's not interested in rebelling. Actually, he would prefer not rebelling. He would like to feel that he's in control of himself. But what can he do? That's what he says to himself. And sometimes it's inadvertently. He didn't know. He didn't know it was Shabbos. So, so whichever it was, if he's saying, if he's saying vidui for a certain sin that he did, let him describe it. So my uncle says that sometimes a person makes a mistake and he thinks that uh, that, we, that he that he that uh, that that when he mistook when he, the mistake, he really had knowledge. You know, after the passage of time, uh, things we especially things that we become embarrassed about and ashamed about, we change our perspective as to what happened. And what, that's certainly true. I think there's another explanation. Don't mean to sound Freudian, but sometimes in the unconscious, consciously you can be chatasi, I sinned inadvertently. But in the unconscious, it could be pashati, it could be a VC. And on the other hand, every pashati, even the rebelliousness, emanates from a mistake. If he realizes the truth, he wouldn't have done it. So in every, almost every sin, you have elements of khatasi, you have elements of avisi, you have elements of pashati. 
So therefore, when we say the vidui, we say all three. Now, where is the vidui learned from? It's learned from the Kohen Gadol. Because the Kohen Gadol at Yom HaKippurim, when he gave the, the, the Karbanos, he says, Chatu Avu Pashu. They sinned inadvertently. They sinned knowingly. They sinned rebelliously. And sometimes it goes in that order. It starts, it starts with Chatasi Avisi Pashati. So the so the the a person, it was learned from the Kohen Gadol and Yom HaKippurim, the, the Vitoi. Now, uh, the, the um, now, however, if you take a look, so, so according to the Rambam, the vidui contains the following things. First of all, you have to ask the kapara, Anna, please. And then you have to describe the nature of the sin. This, before you say the sin itself, the nature, that it was intentional, it was, it was uh, knowing, it was rebelliousness. And then you say, according to the Rambam, what the sin was, and then you express regret, and then you accept for the future never to do it again. But if you take a look at the Rambam, uh, Perik Beis Halacha Zayin, also of Hilchos Shiva, the second chapter. So the Rambam says there. About Yom Kippurim. I say, I, I'm sorry, the Halach uh, Ches. Habidui, the Rambam there seems to be talking about Yom Kippurim. He says, Habidui Shinogu Bokol Yisrael. The Vidui that all the Jewish people are accustomed to say, Aval Anachnu Chatanu. Kulanu, some have a text, all of us. We all sinned. And then the Rambam adds, Buhu Iker Habidui. And this, uh, this is the main, the, the, the main part of the Bidui. This is the essence of the confessional prayer. This is the essence of the confessional prayer. So everybody, the Mishnah, the Lecha Mishnah, and many of the Afronim all ask, hold on a second. The Rambam just said that in order to say Vidui, the Rambam just said that in order to say Vidui, a, a person, uh, 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 in order to say Vidui, a person has to uh, 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 the, the, in, in order, in order to say vidui, a a, per, a person ha, has to say, describe the sin, mention the sin, say that I I did not have in the uh, uh, and ask for kapara, ask for atonement, and and then he says that in Yom Kippur, the main part of the vidui, the essence of the vidui. Is that all of that the katano? Just a couple words, three words, or four words. I sinned. Perhaps we can say katano means by mistake, inadvertently. You know, we had a lot of sins when Yom Kippur comes that were not just inadvertently. And besides that, it doesn't, it doesn't meet the standards that the Rambam mentions at the beginning of Elfus Shiva, of begging for kapara, begging for atonement. So how are we to understand and, and mentioning the sin? And this question was asked by many Achronim. So the Lecha Mishnah says 
that the Rambam is relying on what he said earlier. But really, if you just say, it's not enough. But he says, you should say, we sin, but God, please forgive me for the sins that I sinned inadvertently. In other words, he just, he's relying on what he said earlier. However, the words of the Rambam do not seem to support this understanding. And then the Torah Evan suggests something also, it's, uh, it makes some sense, but the words again do not support it. But it's something that we have to understand. The Rambam says that so he says we have to, there are two types of sins. There are sins that I realize I did. And when I realize I sinned, I have to, as soon as I realize I sinned, I have to say vidui. It doesn't have to be on Yom Kippur. If I realize I sinned, Two days after Yom Kippur, I say, Ana Hashem, please God, Chatasi Yavisi Pashatli Fenech, I sin before you, Vasisi Kachmachat, Bahare Nani Boshti, I am ashamed, Umischarit, and I have Karatan, and I, I, I regret it. Lola Mani Chosla Dabaza, and I won't return to it. And while this is true every day of the year, it's certainly true on Yom Kippur. If I'm aware of the sin that I did, I have to go and describe the sin in the video. As the Rambam says at the beginning of Hilchus Shiva. When the Rambam says, we just say, that we all sinned, and that's the video. There he's talking about the sins that I don't know about. In other words, it's not enough on Yom Kippur to say be do it for the sins that I'm aware. But I have to say on Yom Kippur, I have to say be do it. in a short way for the sins that I'm not aware. Obviously, there a person cannot describe the sin. The question is, even according to the according to the Turayevan, still you should still say, Anna, please forgive me. Give me atonement. How we can understand it. And but the thought, the thought of the 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 Turayevan. In other words, the Torah even seems to create a difference between the tshuva the rest of the year and tshuva Yom Kippur. The rest of the year I'm required to do tshuva when I know I did a sin. When I'm aware of the sin. Yom Kippur, I have to do tshuva even for sins that I'm not aware of. And we have to understand that. So... We, ha we have to understand that. Now, I think we could explain the Rambam in two ways. First way, now generally, when I mention an answer from my father, I mention the answer of my father before I mention my own answer. However, since the shear is going to focus on my father's answer, I'll just quickly mention an answer that I thought of many years ago when I was young. So, and, and then I'll discuss my father's answer. The Yom Kippurim, the Rambam says that Yom Kippurim, who's man Yom Kippurim is a day of tshuva for everybody, like Yachid or for all, both the individuals and the community. 
Israel. Israel. And uh, and and it's it, it's the it's the conclusion or forgiveness and pardon for the Jewish people. Now, so the Rambam says the Yom Kippurim is a requirement of tshuva, not just for the individual, but for all of the Jewish people. But it's more than that. These two mitzvahs on Yom Kippurim of doing tshuva that is an obligation on the community, the community being the nation of Israel and the individual being me and being whoever. Those two mitzvahs go hand in hand. So in a sense, Yom HaKippurim, we could suggest that the vidu of Yom HaKippurim is said as, as a as a for is 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 said as, as for for the tzibur. It's said for the nation. And I receive atonement as part of the nation if I do tshuva. So we could say, when can we talk about the nature of the sin? We can talk about the nature of the sin when we can talk about the nature of the sin when I'm talking about myself. But if the vidui is the vidui for all of the Jewish people, so if the vidui is the vidui for all of the Jewish people, so then I can talk about the nature of the sin. So uh, the, because of that, because of that, there is a, we, we don't have to, we don't have to, uh, to talk, mention the individuals. But then the question is, but the Kohen Gadol and Yom Kippurim, he says, Avu Pashu, Chatu, Chatu, Avu Pashu. So even though he doesn't mention the individual sin, but he talks about the nature of the sin, rebelliousness, uh, sinning without knowledge, sinning with knowledge. So here too, we should talk about that. And then also, there is no asking of kapara, asking asking for atonement. And the coin Gadol, he asked, he would say, Anna, please God. So even this answer that I suggested when I was younger has to be understood. Now, my father, is that so? He explained it, my memory serves me correctly, from a different perspective. He explained it, that the the that Yom Kippur, we receive the, the the day of Yom Kippur offers extra atonement. The, the, the essence of the day is a day of atonement. That's what Yom Kippur means. Since the essence of the day is a day of atonement, so because of that. We, we, uh, since the day is the day of atonement, so Mamela, the requirements of tshuva, what you have to say is not as great because the day of Yom Kippur aids us in getting kapara, aids us in getting atonement. And there is a question that could be raised because. Where did the Rambam at the beginning of Hilchus Shuvah get that we have to say, oh no, please God, where did he get all that from? He got it from the Kohen Gadol and Yom Kippurim. And there the Kohen Gadol said, oh no, please God, forgive them. And there the Kohen Gadol says, Avu Chatu, Avu Pashu. So why is it that on Yom Kippurim, True, there's a special aid 
from the Dushas Hayom of Yom Kippurim, the sanctification of Yom Kippurim as a day of atonement that helps us in our tshuva process. But if it helps us, why didn't it help the Kohen Gadol? Why did the Kohen Gadol have to say, Ana Hashem, Chatu Avu Pashu? Why did it? Why did they have to say that? So we have to understand this. Now, my uncle in Nala Shiva, I think it might even be the first chapter, he says a remarkable Kiddush. And there, but it's very vague. My uncle says that there are two forms of Shiva. There's a form of Shiva of Kapara of getting atonement. But then there is what he says is a form of tshuva of tahara. In other words, even if a person does tshuva, resolves and commits himself not to do the sin, but when one does a sin, besides the sin that he did, the sin had an effect on him. It contaminated him. So when you do tshuva, so first of all, you have to rid yourself of the sin. The word kapara is cleaning, like getting dirt off you. The sin that you had, that was the dirt. But... The sin also made you contaminated, contaminated you. And you have to work, I assume, on your personality to, and that's the hara. And the Kohen Gadol, after he did the aboda, after he did the service of kapara, of asking for atonement from the Jewish people, he would say, Lefnei Hashem Kutaru. He would tell the Jewish people, Go purify yourself. And Shiva Yom Kippurim is identified with Tahara. Mikvah Hashem, the, 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 the uh, God is the hope of the Jewish people. It's the Mikvah. Just like a Mikvah is Metaher, just like a Mikvah purifies those who are contaminated. When we, in a sense, Submit to God. When one goes, my uncle would say, when one goes in a mikvah, he puts his head in the water. He, submit, he, he submits himself. So in a sense, that is part of the process of tahara. The Kohen Gadol could bring kapara, could gain atonement for the Jewish people. But the Kohen Gadol could not be metaher, the Jewish people. He can't purify them. Only a person can purify himself. I want to suggest a little bit different than my uncle. I want to suggest that actually there are, my uncle said there are two forms of tshuva. And for my uncle, it appeared that you have to do both forms of tshuva. On one hand, you have to do the tshuva of kapara, of atonement. And the other hand, you have to do the tshuva of, of tahara, of purification, of the impact the sin had on you, the psychological impact. And this could be understood. Remember, I once heard uh, someone repeat over what my uncle said. And he said, he doesn't understand what does it mean, tahara. What does it mean? It seems to be a vague term. You know, we say, avera, dovera, savera. One sin causes another sin. In other words, what does one sin cause another sin mean? It means it has an effect on me. It changes my attitudes. So after you get rid of your sins, you have to correct your attitudes also. You know, it's very difficult. 
it's very difficult to to uh, to sin the first time. But once you get used to the sin, and lightning didn't come out of heaven and strike you, sin becomes much easier. And in a sense, you learn, even though there's a wall between you and God, you begin to think you can survive behind that wall. So purification is changing those attitudes, the impact that sin has upon a person. And according to my uncle, it, it, a person has to go far away. Let's say if somebody sinned through gambling. So my uncle gave an example. The halach is, if you say, be doing, you say, I'm not going to gamble again. And you're really committed not to gamble again. That's kapara. You have atonement. But you don't have kapara. You don't have tahara until you get rid of the cards that you used when you gambled. No, it's you have to see yourself as a different person, a completely different person. That's the process of tahara, of purification. So what I want to suggest is because Yom Kippurim, it could be that there is some part of Tahara that applies on the other days of the year. But the main day of Tahara, Yom Lechem the main day of Tahara, of purification, is Yom Kippur. Now, what is the difference? And I want to suggest that the tshuva of Tahara, that brings kapara also. That brings atonement also. Atonement doesn't bring kapara. Atonement doesn't bring purification. But purification brings kapara, brings atonement. And I want to say that in Yom Kippurim, when you purify yourself, so you attain kapara. And that's the idea. The Kohen Gadol, when he said the Vidui, when he gave the sacrifices, he accomplished kapara. He brought atonement for the Jewish people for the Jewish people who sinned, but he did not bring for them purification. Because no one can bring purification for another person. A person could be an aide, perhaps, but ultimately to have purification, as my uncle said, you have to go in the mix for yourself and put your head below the water and then raise your head out of the water. So when we say that Yom HaKippurim brings purification, when we say Yom HaKippurim brings purification, what we're saying is that as a result of the purification, to, to, as a result of the purification, we not only, we, we, we have atonement. Consequently, Yom HaKippurim, which is the day of purification. So the day of Yom Kippurim, where the tshuva is a tshuva of purification, gives atonement and purification, even when we don't use the same standards that we use during the rest of the year for atonement. Why is that? What is the difference between Shuvah Yom HaKippurim and Shuvah and the, the, the rest of the year. But it's a little bit late, so I'm going to have to be short. But the reason, I think the reason is that Shuvah the rest of the year, Shuvah the rest of the year is 
we go to God. I mentioned this and uh, I was asked since uh, COVID, uh, since we, we, we had to deal with COVID, so my shul has uh, only had outdoor minyanim. And because it's outdoor minyanim, so I don't usually speak on Shabbos, even Shabbos Chuvah, but I was asked to speak this, uh, this Shabbos. So, I use that I won't go into the details, but to explain the difference between Shuvah of the Aseris, you made Shuvah of the 10 days of Shuvah and Shuvah the rest of the year. Ram says, Shuvah is always Yachva, it's always nice, it's always good. But on the Aseris, you made Shuvah in the 10 days of Shuvah, it's, it's nicer, it's, it's better. Than, than the rest of the year. Yafa Biosa. Now, and, but Yom Kippur's case, it's the conclusion of Mechila and Slicha. That's the high point of the 10 days of Shabbat. What's unique about Yom Kippur has a special mitzvah of Shabbat. And the special mitzvah of Shabbat and Yom HaKippurim, the special mitzvah of Shabbat and Yom HaKippurim is that the, the, uh, the, the special mitzvah of tshuva and, and Yom HaKippurim is that HaKadosh Baruch Hu comes to us. Dear Shu Es Hashem Behimotso, connect with God, search for God when he's near to you, when he's found by you. During the Aseris Shimei Tshuva and certainly by Yom HaKippurim, HaKadosh Baruch Hu comes to us. HaKadosh Baruch Hu's metaher us. Kapara, we have to do, we do what the Kohen Gundel does for us. But when it comes to, when it comes to, 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 to tshuva, the special mitzvah of tshuva Yom HaKippurim, HaKadosh Baruch Hu figuratively is knocking at our door and he's asking us to do tshuva. He's asking us to do tshuva. We don't have to say, Anna, please, God. I'm doing what you're telling me, God. The Kohen Gadol had to say, Anna, because the Kohen Gadol was talking about kapara, about atonement. Kurbanos are identified with atonement, not with tahara. But the, the itzumo shal yom hakipurim, certainly it's identified with kapara, the name says so. But besides that, it's a Yom of Tahara. It's a day of purification. So because God is coming to us and asking us to do Shiva, consequently, the, the, the requirements are not so great. God says, do Shiva. You don't have to say, Anna, I'm doing what God told me to do. Personally knocks at my door. That's the mitzvah of Yom Kippurim. And, and, uh, that, and there's another thing. The hara doesn't focus on the individual sin. The way my uncle said it, it might. But I think the concept of the hara, that in the, focuses on the person, on the personality, the totality of the personality. Since it focuses on the totality of the personality, we don't focus on the individual sin. We just come close to God. But you know, somebody who's Tomei Mess cannot go to the base of Mikdash. Because the base of Mikdash is the place, the site of the Shrina. And when we come close to the Shrina through the process of Shiva, we have to be mitahir ourselves. We have to purify ourselves. So when we purify ourselves, that's the idea of tshuva. But the idea of tshuva, it's not just the individual sin. It's chatasi. Everything was a mistake. My rebelliousness was a mistake. My, 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 my knowing, sinning knowing was a mistake. And the mistakes I made were a mistake. So Yom Kippurim, the, the, the tshuva of tahara, 
doesn't focus on the individual sin. Of course, you have to get rid of the individual sin also mentally in your mind, determined not to do it again. But the oralization is, God, you're knocking at my door. I recognize, I want to be with you. I, everything I did was a mistake. My whole life was a mistake. That's, that's, that's the, the tahara. That's the purification. That's the purification. Now, just quickly, uh, I didn't never, I, because uh, I didn't uh, come to answer the, uh, the original question. Uh, I skipped over it by mistake. The, the, uh, the, the, the mitzvah of tshuva, as I've mentioned many times, the mitzvah of tshuva is on one hand to get kapara, to get atonement, to rid oneself of one's sin. But the mitzvah of tshuva is more than that. The mitzvah of tshuva is changing my lifestyle. It's changing my lifestyle. And the Rambam says that a person has to say vidui, uh, and even though he said vidui one year and he received atonement, every year he has to say vidui again. Of course, it could be in an abbreviated ma manner, depending on the different opinions. Why? In other words, it's to reinforce to reinforce the tshuva. So really, there are two mitzvahs of vidui. One is a mitzvah of, a, of receiving atonement. So vidui gives atonement. And vidui also is the conclusion of the mitzvah of tshuva. So a person has to say vidui for two reasons. First of all, he has to say vidui in order to, to get atonement to rid himself of the sin, but he has to say vidu also to reinforce his commitment in his mind. The Rambam in the first parak, in the first chapter of Hilfus Shuvah is talking only about atonement. As far as atonement is concerned, there is no mitzvah of tshuva in order to receive atonement. There's only a mitzvah of vidu, but you can't say vidu until you did, until you did tshuva. But there is, as the Ram says in the Koseris and most of Hilchus Tshuva, there is a mitzvah of Tshuva to help you to change your ways, to change your ways in a permanent manner. And from that perspective, a person is required to change his words. But that's not what the first chapter of Hilchus Tshuva is about. So the Koseris is talking of all of Hilchus Tshuva. So he says, You have to return. That's not the mitzvah of seeking kapara. That's the mitzvah of tshuva. But part of the mitzvah of tshuva is also, uh, part of the mitzvah of tshuva is, so you have to return from God and oralize the tshuva. But kapara, that's just the vidu itself. So in the first parak, the Rambam only mentions the requirement of vidui. He doesn't mention the requirements of, uh, he, he, he doesn't mention the requirements of tshuva per se. Okay, we'll leave it here. If anyone has a question, please put it in the chat. Someone said, what is the difference between a mimer and a, a sicha of the law? Uh, a sicha is a deeper chasidus, uh, a mimer, excuse me, the deeper chasidus, uh, uh, not the biggest bucky in these things, but uh, a, 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 uh, a sicha is, uh, is not as deep, uh, not as deep, you know, that's, uh, it's more of a popular style of chasidus. Someone asked, I don't understand this question, is Musr, is Tahara equal to Musr? Uh, I don't know how they define Musr. I guess I, you, I guess I, it's because you said it's working on your personality. They're working so. on your personality. I, I, I guess that, you know, some, some people can work on their personality and they work on it the wrong way, you know, so yeah. that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's what it is, you know. Uh, it, it's a, uh, you could use Musa for personality. You could use Hasidus for personality. You could use learning Torah for personality. It's applying, applying the Torah to your personality. 
to become a, a personality of Torah. And everybody has to know, you don't have to be a Godot to be a personality of Torah. Each person is different, and each person could be a personality of Torah in his own way. Another question, by working on and changing ourselves the rest of the year, can we st still earn the same level of Tahara, or is that level of Tahara only available on Yom Kippur? I would say the Yom Kippur's Keitsu Mechila. So this is a question that I had against my uncle. I would say, that's why I phrased it, that Yom Kippur is the main day of Tahara. You have to understand there is, uh, a, of course, you have to work on yourself all the days. But Yom Kippur, you're held responsible for the sta state of Tahara. And Yom Kippur, you have a special, a special aid, as I mentioned, in, in obtaining Tahara. Okay, I don't see any other uh, questions here. Thank you very much. Yeshikoach, everyone, Shabbat Shalom, Next Sunday. Next uh, Sunday also, yeah. I have share, okay. And so everyone just uh, stay tuned for your regular emails that you get uh, for... Uh, Updates about the upcoming Shiram. Okay, thank you. Okay.